Hospital, Bangkok, Thailand. I'd like to thank Dr. Marie Sharma for the opportunity. Today, I will be speaking on how I do EUS FNAC. The basic things to consider when doing EUS FNA are number one, aspiration techniques, such as how to select the target area, central versus peripheral versus throughout the lesion, speed of needle throw. There are some techniques have been described like door knocking and woodpecker, which I will touch on later. Number of to and fro movements, number of passes, the use of stylage. Number two is suction techniques like standard suction, which requires 10 to 20 ml syringe with negative pressure, red suction, slow pull, or no suction. Needle selection, we have different sizes of needles to choose from. Are they different? The aspiration versus biopsy needles, are these different? Finally, tissue processing, including rows, which is rapid outside evaluation, rows, which is macroscopic outside evaluation, and cytology and histology preparation. Let's start with aspiration method. Finding technique allows tissue acquisition from throughout the lesion. And uh, here's the um, video demonstrating the uh, fanning technique. And here is a target lesion with uh, the fanning technique. The needle trajectory aims at different area throughout the lesion. And uh, you can see that the needle is, is puncturing through a um, uh, random area, depending on how you control the needle. And uh, to achieve this technique, you can do it by controlling the big wheel in order to bring the needle up and down, or you can use the elevator as well to direct the um, needle trajectories. However, I would Avoid using too much of the uh, elevator because it may bend your needle. A random means control trial um, demonstrated that with the fanning technique, it provides better first pass diagnosis compared to standard technique without needle dysfunction. The percentage of first pass diagnosis you would gain from fanning technique is about 85.7% compared to 70, I'm sorry, compared to 57% from standard technique. Door knocking method is advancing the needle in quickly, allowing the handle to hit the stopper, creating a door knocking sound and pull back slowly during the stroke. The woodpecker technique requires moving needle finely and rapidly in the lesion. It is good for a small lesion of less than one centimeter. A prospective study from Japan comparing the door knocking method to conventional technique for pancreatic masses has shown that the door knocking method provides better cellularity but no differences in the diagnostic accuracy. In terms of number of passes, most studies show that three to four passes are required to obtain diagnosis with 22 and 25 gauge FNA needles, whereas only two to three passes are needed with FNB needle. Moving on to suction method, Four RCTs have been performed to compare suction versus no suction using 22 and 25 gauge FNA needle. Three out of four studies show that suction increases the sensitivity and the diagnostic accuracy. However, it also increases the blood contamination in some studies. In terms of bed suction, two randomized control trials comparing bed suction with standard suction using 22 gauge FNA needle 
And the results show that breath suction provides better accuracy, higher tissue adequacy and cellularity with less blood contamination. In one of the studies by Wang show that only two passes required for non-pancreatic lesion using wet suction with no rows. In terms of silent slow pool technique, a multi-center randomized control trial comparing slow pool versus standard suction show that both techniques provide comparable diagnostic accuracy with 22 gauge FNA needles. Only two passes were required and this video um, shows you the uh, slow pool technique. And this is how the slow pool technique is being done. You have your nurse assistant um, uh, pulling back the stylus slowly as you are performing the aspiration. And again, the fanning technique is applying right here. Now, based on the current literature, fanning technique provides better first pass diagnosis that's based on one randomized control trial. Three to four passes may be required for FNA without rows, and um, the use of salad is not necessary as it does not um, provide any differences in terms of tissue adequacy and quality, and that is based on four RCTs. And um, in terms of suction, standard suction, gives you better yield than no suction that's based on RCT. The wet suction and silo slope will appear to be effective as well. So really based on this level of evidence, I would say the fanning technique is recommended. Three to four passes may be needed for aspiration if no rose is present. And the stylus is probably not needed. Standard suction can be applied. It's proven to be helpful. In terms of wet suction and slow pool, uh, the data look quite good, but I think this is going to be up to the um, uh, endosonographer preferences whether or not they like to use this technique. Now, moving next to needle selection, based on nine RCTs and five meta-analysis, 22 gauge and 25 gauge are comparable in terms of diagnostic performance. I will not touch too much on the details of the biopsy needles today, but what I want to show you is this largest meta-analysis to date, comparing the um, FNA versus FNB needles for solid lesion. The results of this study show that FNB needle is superior to FNA in all outcomes including diagnostic accuracy, tissue core rate, and it requires less passes. And this study included 18 RCTs with the number of patients over 2,000, and all of the biopsy needles were performed with pro-core needles. These results are applicable for pancreatic and non-pancreatic masses. Lastly, tissue processing. Traditionally, rows had the biggest impact with increased diagnostic accuracy and decreased needle passes. However, recent data show that rows does not affect the results of FNA in large volume centers. Recently, MOS has been introduced to the field. MOS is a macroscopic on-site evaluation of the tissue and it's been shown that the tissue length of more than four millimeters has been indicative of tissue adequacy. And the role of MOAS has been evaluated. Uh, this is a randomized control trial comparing MOAS versus no MOAS, meaning just the conventional FNA in the absence of rows. Only 19 gauge needles were used in this study. Right, the results show that MOAS provides comparable diagnostic accuracy but fewer passes compared to conventional FNA in the absence of rows. Besides from cytology, the tissue should be prepared for histology using cell blocks. In my practice, 
I fixed the uh, tissue in formalin and later paraffin embedded. This technique provides histological examination and ancillary studies. We have demonstrated that the combination of histology and cytology assessment provides better diagnostic yield compared to either one alone as demonstrated here. The sensitivity of the combination of the two methods improved from uh, 68 to 74 and the sensitivity remained high at 96 with the AURZ improved from uh, 0 0.80 to 0.85. And therefore, the combination of histology and cytology is recommended for tissue processing. Um, I just want to show you here, um, before I finish, a video of how I perform an EUS FNAC. So um, uh, starting with um, inserting the um, uh, FNA needle through the working channel, and uh, you want to tighten up the uh, uh, needle. And after the needle is locked, then you make sure that the sheath is out of the scope to prevent scope damage when you pass the needle. Then um, the uh, stopper is unlocked, and uh, we are going to use Doppler at this point to make sure that there are no intervening vessels in the needle passage. Once we confirm that, we can pull back the silo a little bit and advance the needle in. And if you're going to use suction here, you can remove the silo altogether and attach the needle with the suction. But if you're going to do slow pull technique, you can have your nurse slowly pull back the, um, the silo as you are um, doing the aspiration. For this video, we are going to demonstrate a suction. I only use five ml of suction, and once you attach the suction to the needle, the, uh, the suction can be open. And um, the aspiration is performed. Again, um, we like to do a finding technique to make sure that we get the tissue from throughout the lesion. Um, and after the aspiration is done, then we retrieve the tissue um, like this. We are preparing slides for cytology smears as well as um, formalin for cell block. So once we get the, uh, the needle out, we like to expel the material by using stylet. We push the stylet back into the needle and that way we can um, expel the uh, materials onto the glass slide and prepare for cytology and histology. Finally, um, I'd like to uh, conclude that uh, the way I do us of an ac is that the uh, needle selection is customized depending on the lesion. I always apply finding technique the aspiration techniques, whether or not I use the um, door knocking or woodpecker would depend on the, uh, uh, the nature of the lesion. I always apply a slow pull. The suction may be added if no materials observed in the aspects. And finally, tissue processing, which I think as important as the um, uh, aspiration techniques. Uh, we have no rows, therefore, I always do macroscopic on-site evaluation of the tissue, looking for core tissue. And um, I also prepare um, cytology smears as well as cell blocks for histology. And with that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention, and I will be happy to answer any questions. And... Um, I want to wish you all well and stay safe during this pandemic. Thank you very much.